Time to talk about traffic. Right now, we're in this weird moment where a lot of smart people agree that the current North American street design is not sustainable. The commute time and the fatalities are escalating. But after reading these articles, I wondered, is the solution finally here? So I took a deep dive into that question over the last few months, not just into how they design a road, but how do they design their transportation network, trying to piece together the big picture here. I actually ended up in the Netherlands, checking out the street network myself. The answer I found to whether the Dutch have solved congestion is yes. It just doesn't look like what I thought. In fact, even at 50% autonomous adoption, they believe that commute time will only go down by about 6%. So the solution is in the Netherlands. So that's where I gotta go. On the way, some context. In cities, car traffic will get slower and slower until it becomes faster to take transit, bike, or walk. This is known as the Down Thompson's Paradox. You might think that adding an additional lane will help, and it does temporarily, but then people switch to driving, noticing that it's faster, and the speed regresses back to the speed of the alternatives. This is known as induced demand. Pedestrians, cyclists, and vehicles can all coexist without conflict, but only if they're all going the same slow speed. This advances the principles of shared streets. The Netherlands has implemented these concepts to great effect. In the 70s, the Netherlands had the same car-centric street design as the US, but they found that by making it easier and safer to walk, bike, and ride transit, fatalities decreased and street flow improved for everyone, even drivers. This required a change in priorities. They prioritized transit, prioritized cycling and pedestrians, and deprioritize the car. They also made a change at the network level. They prioritize streets by mode and speed. The basic concept is that higher speeds should form a perimeter around a network of lower speed access ways and laneways. Walking and biking will often be the most direct and fastest method. At the super block level, this is what it basically looks like. Laneways are tailored to pedestrians and low speeds. Access ways are tailored to pedestrians and cyclists and slightly higher speeds. These slower streets are designed with restrictions in traffic calming so that vehicles are not allowed in certain areas or are forced to travel at cycling and walking speeds. This approach advances the principles of shared streets, which shows that pedestrians, cyclists, and vehicles can coexist as long as they are all going the same slow speed. Transitways are tailored to pedestrians, cyclists, and transit. Boulevards accommodate all different boats, but you'll notice that transit is given its own dedicated lane, and pedestrians and cyclists are separated from vehicle traffic. And bike lanes and sidewalks are raised relative to side streets, requiring cars to slow down when crossing. This is in significant contrast to North America, where vehicles are given priority on all roads, with no physical measures to slow them down. There's limited accommodation for alternatives to the car, just look at the Toronto Bicycle Network versus the Amsterdam Network. And transit often doesn't get dedicated lanes and buses and streetcars get stuck in traffic. To reduce intersection conflicts with cars, the Netherlands provide protected intersections, underpasses, and bridges. To control vehicle speeds and ensure safety for all modes, all streets have a host of traffic calming measures like raised sidewalks, chicanes, and speed humps. More generally, beyond the super block level, and as detailed super well in Jason Slaughter's Not Just Bikes videos, the Netherlands has priority networks, including traffic signal timing for cars, bikes, transit, and walking. These priority networks are a further way to separate by speed and mode. Here's an example of a car priority network as you can see, it prioritizes cars, but it still has a separated bicycle lane. And this is a bicycle priority network. As you can see, it has high quality infrastructure. Oftentimes you're completely separated from cars on bicycle roads and you have priority at intersections. So you can quickly and safely get across the city. These streets provide access to residential shops, offices, and as a result, have lower speeds. 
In contrast to streets, perimeter roads have fast moving traffic and have few accesses and other modes are completely separated. North American cities mix streets and roads called strokes, which incorporate high rates of speed with other modes and accesses, creating dangerous conditions. In simulations with Dutch street design applied at the super block level, you can see the difference. North American roads are obviously not working and it's pretty well known. What's up with the traffic in Toronto? I don't know. Have they figured this out? So the Netherlands has figured this out. In North America, we just need to change the standards and things need to change at the political level too. In the Netherlands, when they go redo a road after its useful life, they just implement the new standard. We could do this in North America, but if we keep building with the same car-centric model, it'll only make the problem worse, even with autonomous vehicles. If you enjoyed that video, please like and subscribe, and you'll definitely like these next videos.